What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin, and today we're listening to Duran Gray with the song Zen Swin Tai. This is from their album Insulated World, which was released in 19, in 19, in 2018. What am I saying? Duran Gray is a band that I have listened to a, a, I have listened to a couple albums from them. I've listened to a few songs from them. Um, I'm relatively familiar with the band. And I've always thought that they're, they're one of those bands that always puts out something interesting to listen to. They have a lot of different styles that they draw from, and you'll never be bored uh, with their music is definitely what I would say. For those of you that don't know, Darren Gray is a Japanese heavy metal band formed in 1997. They are described as avant-garde metal, progressive metal, alternative metal, death metal, and so on and so forth. They kind of have a little bit of everything in them. I'll put a timestamp because I'm probably going to talk a little bit, but I just have two things really quick that I want to say. Um, one, I know my general audience, I, I know what you guys like, and I know this is probably not something you're going to enjoy, but I find that I kind of have two different kinds of people on my channel. I have two different kinds of viewers. I have viewers that come to this channel uh, to, to watch me listen to older stuff or stuff that they grew up with and see what my thoughts on it, see are on it, see if I appreciate it, see what I think of it from a modern point of view or from someone younger. And then I have those of you that will pretty much watch any, any video that I put out, but are also interested in like really learning more about music and exploring more with me as I go, because all of this is pretty much uncharted territory. And some of you guys are looking for new bands and new music to listen to, or just to hear kind of, you know, what's out there. What, is, what's out, what else is out there besides what you know? Both sides are appreciated, by the way. I'm not disregarding one side or another or pity, pitting one against the other. I just, you know, I, I find that there's generally two types. And of course, that's not everyone. That's just kind of what I notice. So if this typically isn't your, your thing, because I assume that there may be some growling and stuff like that in here, then I employ you just to give it a shot. Maybe you'll learn something you like, or maybe you won't, maybe you'll hate it. But hey, you can never be faulted for trying, right? It doesn't matter if you like the song or don't like the song, but the effort in trying, the effort to put into listening to it, to try and understanding it, I think that's 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 the most commendable thing ever. You know, that's all you can do. I think that's the mark of a true music lover, someone that even if they don't like a certain genre or even if they're, they don't like some, something or a certain uh, style of music, to take the time to still understand it, appreciate it, and at least put in the work to actually listen to it beyond maybe what like the few like top, um, I don't know, the top three bands or the top three artists of a certain genre to like really dig into it and really try and understand it. I think that's the mark of a music lover to me personally. It's not about what you love, it's about what you try. The second thing I want to say is I have a recommendation for you and I implore you. When I make this recommendation, I want you to actually like set aside time. Like whenever you have a quiet like 10 or 15 minutes, whatever, play this song. Let me know what you think about it. I don't, I don't know how much you, many of you guys will like it. I'm not sure. I had just discovered this band and a lot of their music. Um, Kyo Dot or Kyo Dot. I'm not sure how you pronounce their name. I'm recommending the song The Manifold Curiosity. Wow, what a, what a beast of a song. It's, I think it's about 15 minutes long. That song takes you on so many different levels. It goes from just soft ambient to like metal, but like it, it's so interesting the way that they like just change up the game. I don't think I've really ever heard um, anything quite like the way that they create their music. And really the whole album and everything that they do is like so diverse. But there's so many different styles within just like the album or just the songs. You get jazz, you get elements of death metal, you get like everything. They're, they're just so interesting to listen to. But take, take 10, 15 minutes, whenever you get like a quiet moment to really listen to a song, um, I'm gonna put it in the description down below, but KO Dot with the Manifold Curiosity. I am loving, loving what I'm hearing so far from this band um, and that album. You guys can let me know what you think of the song in the comments down below. You can join me there as well to discuss really anything. You can join me on Twitter. And without further ado, this is Darren Gray with Zetsun Tai. I'm sorry for mispronounce it. I'm sorry. Zetsun Tai.
waiting to see when I could come in. <laughs> I had to wait till the song was done. One thing that I like a lot, I've always liked about Duran Gray, and especially with Kyo's voice, who is the vocalist in the song, and really, I guess you could say this about everybody in the band, but I like how their music has always maintained this intensity, whether it's in the quiet moments of the song or in the obvious louder moments of the song. Throughout their music, there's always this restrained intensity. And the section that I really feel you can hear this most is in, in two different sections. Um, in the section where the music picks up and it goes into like this more like uh, blast beat metal vibe or whatever, in his vocals, um, first of all, Kyo has always been a absolute insane vocalist. The things that he can do with his voice, I've always been impressed by him. I've always been impressed by him. But the way that he uses like a guttural sound in the back of his throat, that it's not quite a growl and it's not quite a scream. It almost sounds like he's more just like very angrily speaking and he's doing it so quickly and rapidly. Like the words are just like flowing out of his mouth really quick. And I love how it's like a restrained, angry, guttural scream that's kind of right here. And it's just like a pure anger, right? But the way that he, the way that he vocalizes it and the little like rolls in his throat when he, or in his speaking, when he does that section, I think it's just really interesting um, on a technical aspect about his vocal specifically. Of course, you can get into the way that he sings very high and he sings very low. Um, and that kind of brings you to the second part is in his singing in the quiet sections or in just the verses of the song. His low voice is very restrained and very intense even though he's singing very low. I just think it's super interesting to listen to because along with the rest of the music, no doubt, there's just this quiet uh, restraint. There's like this beast in a cage that's just like ready to be lit, lo lit loose. And it's just like, it's ready. It's ready to pounce and then he opens the door and boom, you get it. Like his voice is very soothing as well. It's very smooth, very smooth. And it's just his vocalizations that I've always found really interesting, his way that he um, works with the music itself. In this song in particular, the drum work is really fascinating. Um, I believe it's from Shinya, who's the drummer. Yeah, Shinya. And I really like his drumming because same thing, there's like this, this restraint to it. There's a power behind it, but you can tell that he restrains himself most of the time. And the little beats that he does, especially with the toms and the fills, uh, just really sound really good throughout the whole song. And what, all right, I really, really like this section. I'm, I'm gonna keep doing this, this is what I do. I really, this particular section right here, I love everything, everything in this section. Listen, listen to the guitar in the back, setting this nice, uh, very atmospheric, slightly dark tone in the back, just just like in the background, right? You got the drum and bass with this rhythm. But like, it, it's, it's so, it's so dark, but it's so beautiful at the same time. And his voice just kind of maneuvering back and forth amongst the instruments. Like this section right here is perfect to me. Just absolutely perfect. Let me back it up just a slight bit. I love this. And then slowly the, the song builds back up into its intensity, of course, releasing into, into the more uh, hardcore section. But the, I don't know, there's, there's something about the way that they've always created music and I've always enjoyed them. Like I said, you're always going to get something interesting when you listen to Duran Gray and this song is no different. And also at seven minutes, this did not feel like a long song at all to me. Um, it actually moved relatively quick because I enjoyed overall everything I heard in it. And even though, like in this particular song, I don't think that the heavy, the heavy section was like that interesting. Like just sonically, I didn't think it was like that interesting. Okay, what is it, blast beats and just, I thought his vocalizations during that part were really interesting. But musically, that, that the blast beat, the, the fast paced thing, I just don't care that much. But I like the way they use it here because it's, it's, it's the climax and then it builds back down. It has a little bit more of it at the end, but it's never overdone, it's never over long. It doesn't stay too long. So if you don't enjoy that part, it re it moves over relatively quickly. If you do enjoy that part, it's there long enough that I feel like it's worth and warranted 
being in there and you can sit back and enjoy it. But do you hear what I mean like with his vocalizations because he's speaking and singing so fast in that section that it sounds like he's tripping over his words but I, one he's not but two that adds to the like feel of that section the manic uh, section right there the craziness the insanity of, of the vocals there is matched by his intensity and the way that he almost uh, stumbles over his own words. I think that's so cool and I think that really adds to like the mad aspect of it. Especially in that section right there. And one thing that I like about the Japanese language in the first place, and this is also one reason I really like like Japanese rappers especially, is because of the language of, of Japanese itself and the way that it sounds. Because it's very tonally pleasing, the consonants are sharp, they're very direct in their words, but then there's a lot of softness also behind it, like in the language itself and the consonants and the vowels and stuff like that. At one time I wanted to learn Japanese, I didn't get too far. When it comes to especially to metal and rap, I really like Japanese. It just sounds really nice. Kind of the same way how like Latin, Spanish, French, Italian are nice, like the romantic languages. Japanese sounds very good in this type of music. And of course in other types of music, but I'm specifically talking about rock, metal, um, and rap. <laughs> And then Toshia is the bassist on the song and in the in the band. And I like the way he usually he usually plays his bass, especially on the climaxes of the song. It slightly reminds me of Opeth and just the way that it's played. But it's just a perfect mood in the background along with everything else. It usually matches the guitar, or not the guitar. Uh, the bass usually matches the drums, obviously in a lot of music, but especially here. And they always work very well together in creating their rhythms. Because the whole song is in Japanese, I have the English translation here. As you guys probably know, when it comes to translations online of other languages, um, they're probably not going to be completely accurate. So some things are going to sound maybe off, silly. Some words are just not meant to be translated into other languages and they just mean what they mean in their native tongue. Verse one, measuring happiness by comparing, trying to blend in by hiding your true selves. Don't go, my dear, unbearable song. You laugh again today. Now the first line, although actually the first two lines in the song, um, hold a lot of meaning actually measuring happiness by comparing right a lot of times we compare ourselves to maybe someone else i've mentioned this before at one point but especially on social media um where you're seeing pictures of people maybe in different places they're always smiling oh what do they have that i don't why are they happy what what what's in their life that's so happy what can i do what can i do to make myself and my life that happy you're constantly comparing because all you see is the positive all you see is a certain aspect of people on social media so you're constantly comparing your happiness to their happiness, even though that's not a reasonable thing to do at all. Then the second line, trying to blend in by hiding your true selves, trying to blend in with that crowd, even though that's not really who you are. Duran Gray has always had this, not only darkness to them, sure, but this nihilistic like aspect in their viewpoint, in their lyrics. And that's especially, uh, like, that's especially evident in their chorus where it says, anyone can find happiness and love if you deceive each other. I think that's such an interesting line, the way they say that. Like, oh, you can find happiness in love, but you gotta lie to get it. I, I would say that that's not true, but I can see why he would say that and why, yeah, by, by a certain aspect, it seems that that is the only way that you can uh, find a sort of happiness is to deceive people into uh, giving it to you. And then it ends when he says, not being allowed even that, what value do you think I will find on my own? They'll just rob you of it, their so-called world, realizing that it was all just a waste. Are you saying that's better? I don't know. Um, the song name was is Zents, oh my gosh, Zetsun Tai, uh, which means, I believe, Insulator. Um, now the album is called The Insulated World. I guess when you think about insulation, like in a house, it's meant to either keep uh, the heat in the house or to kind of stop heat from entering the house from like the sun and the roof. So the insulated world is like a world that's maybe insulated in the sense that it's meant to keep something contained without letting something else in. So maybe everyone's kind of stuck in their own world and they're not letting people or new ideas or I don't know, things in. I don't know, it can apply to a lot of things. I'm not 100% sure, but either way, I like this song. So <laughs> that's where I end up. Guys, please let me know what you thought of the song. Uh, did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you like it at all? I don't know, I liked it. And don't forget, please, please. I'm actually genuinely curious. When you get 15 minutes, 
sit down and listen to the song that I'm going to link below in the description. It, it's one of my favorite discoveries so far this year. And the year's almost over, but we're all still discovering music, right? Anyways, you can join me on Twitter. You can join me in the comments down below. I hope that you guys have an awesome day, and I will see you later.